Out of all the repots I've done this week, I have two that I just wanted to document and share with you. The first orchid I'm repotting in this video is the Epicatlea Rene Marquez crossed with Dimarandra emarginata. Now, seeing as back in the day I was looking for an Epicatlea Rene Marquez, but I couldn't source one, I went a little bit gung ho and bought orchids that had at least the Epicatlea Rene Marquez as parents, and that's how I came about this orchid. And the parents of the Epicatlea Rene Marquez are Epidendrum Pseudepidendrum and Catlea Clesiana, which I find super interesting because if you look at the flamethrower, you will get the bloom shape of the Pseudoepidendrum, but you don't see the features of the Cattleya clesiana. Anyway, that on a side note, just a little tidbit of information about the Epicatlea Rene Marquez, which of course I'm not repotting, but to break down all the parents in this hybrid, I just added that in. And the Dimarandra emarginata is a beautiful kind of reed stem as well, with a very uniquely shaped bloom. But the blooms of my Epidendrum hybrid here <laughs> what you can really see is the shape that is reflected is the Epicatlia Rene Marquez, maybe a little bit closer to the Rothara Yokosuka story, Sejuara Yokosuka story, depending on which one you prefer. The really good thing about all of this, though, is that these blooms are very welcome. This orchid blooms during a time of year when you're just coming out of winter. It's a wonderful pop of color to have, and they last at least two months, looking super pristine. And even as they fade, it takes another four weeks before they fall off. So it's a three month blooming period. And thankfully, this orchid also handles my winter conditions, even though she would do a lot better if I I could keep it warm enough. But a little bit more information about the Dimarandra imaginata because we don't see this orchid specifically in collections is look at her distribution. Now we got the Central America and South America, which is understandable. It pretty much is self-explanatory, but then you can also see that maybe somebody got a little bit ahead of themselves and placed where she is found around the Iberian Peninsula in the north of Europe, down by Réunion. That makes sense. And then supposedly Dimarandra can also be found down in Indonesia. I wonder if somebody who did this map knew that I was growing at least a Dimarandra as a parent in a hybrid <laughs> and thought, oh, it grows in Spain. Side joke. But anyway, the repotting of this orchid is always a lot of fun because I don't have to be that fussy about it. I don't have to worry too much, but I do still try to be careful when a hammer once again is necessary to get an orchid out of the pot. The root growth that you see here is approximately two years, and I did mention I could have left the orchid in the pot, except I don't want the broken pot to be in my line of sight anymore. But just as well, I'm going in, even though I wouldn't have repotted her, because with two new growths, we have a lot, a lot of space that we have to recreate for the new roots to find their way through, so the orchid doesn't get suffocated. It was an extremely windy day on the patio that day, but it was very refreshing, and and I took my sweet time because this is not one of those complicated repots where you have to think, you have to tiptoe around the orchid. Even the new growths were not in my way. So this was a fun process to get through and also to finally get her into a nice looking pot. And I could also finally get rid of the early, early supports that I made with wire that has been straightened, but I didn't know if it would rust in the pot. So back in the day, I used to sellotape everything that was in contact with the water. <laughs> and back in the day, being 2018, you can see that this has lasted a super long time, but it's a good thing that I can now get rid of it because I have another support that I would like to recycle, one of the pretty white ones. <laughs> And yes, I broke a lot of root tips and I was careful trying not to break the ones that were in the middle, but the damage was done. But I just needed that space because I'm anticipating amazing root growth from this orchid. Thankfully, she is not shy in doing so. And here is my wonderful new wire that I am recycling from the Bias Tancavilia repot. <laughs> this orchid finally gets to look the part in the collection with a proper white wire and a wonderful new pot. And as per is standard on my patio, I put the water into the pot first and then I start to pot the orchid up. And you know what? 
I could have used a pot even bigger than that, but I didn't have one available and other bigger pots are allocated for other orchids that need them more. So we're just going to have to probably repot her again in two years when hopefully a pot size will come that is much bigger than this, but not that big that I can't fit this orchid on a shelf anymore for the winter months. So here's something that I would like to point out to you if this helps you with the positioning of your orchid in the pot. I'm always a fan of putting an orchid into the middle but if you have a clear direction of growth and suddenly your orchid is pulling off into different directions with another lead, look at how your orchid is producing new growths along the rhizome. Normally our rhizomes grow a new growth on the left and the next one will be on the right. Very rarely do we have a cycle of growth habits that only appears on the same side all the time, resulting that the orchid grows in a distinct circle. So here we have the classic left and right, left and right. And now we can somewhat gauge how many years can this orchid last in this pot if nothing goes wrong with the root system, just by looking at where the new growths are coming. So the recent new growth is coming from the left, which means that the future new growth will come from the right. And on the other one as well, this one is coming from the right. So the next new growth will be coming off the left of that growth. I hope that makes sense. And that would give this orchid, bar any issues, at least two years in the pot. Nothing to be concerned about if you have a very big pot, but if you are limited with pot size, then take that into consideration. Look at the growth habit of your orchid along the rhizome and let it help you make a decision when you pot your orchid up. Next up, also a quick update, another broken pot, my Cattleya bicolor. It goes without saying that this bicolor comes from Brazil, as the two dots indicate on the map. And then there was somebody in North America. She is not native to North America, but I wonder about this map creation thing. Maybe there is somebody out there that just likes to pull the legs of us orchid growers and make us think even more than we already do. <laughs> She arrived on the patio in July of 2021 looking like this. So it took a couple of months before I was able to pot her up because clearly the root system was next to non-existent, but we had something to work with. And this is where I introduced a tip on repotting an orchid where you would like the roots to go down into the media, the way you can train them to go down and seek out the humidity, any new roots, any orchid that is bare root, suspend her above the water retentive media and let the roots grow into the pot. So fast forward from that, suspended potting up method. I have to address this orchid as well simply because oh my goodness look at this beautiful root growth and yes broken pot. There is no way this orchid is going to live in a broken pot for another two years even though there's plenty of room in the pot. This orchid is a vigorous root grower as you can see in my dry conditions this is what she is capable of but I'm not doing this for another two years and we've got a new growth coming as well. So we are going to address this orchid in such a manner that she will not have to be disturbed until she, hopefully, blooms for us. I have to say I'm super pleased with the result of this root system, but you can clearly see by the growth habit of this root system, the orchid did not need repotting. The new growth wasn't up against the pot. There would have been plenty of space in this pot for another two root systems, but still here we are. And I had a great time cleaning this orchid up. I went a little bit more gung-ho with this cleaning up than I thought I was going to simply because this would have been an easy up pot situation. <laughs> but again, it was a beautiful day on the patio and I just thought, well, this one's easy. The lecker isn't sticking to the roots. It's falling off nicely and I had easy access to the dead roots. They just came off wonderfully and left me with ah, a sight to behold that needed to get into the pot super quickly just to make sure uh, that we don't get ahead of ourselves, make a mistake and do something extremely damaging and then get cross with ourselves. And seeing as she is a bifoliate, I have to say that <clears throat> scale can be an issue. So we're doing some preventative measures at the same time. Oh, and I just love the look of this. I just love the fact that this pot isn't broken anymore. Her growths are getting bigger and bigger. Also, the stability of the orchid is now more guaranteed with a bigger pot. There is a bit more weight to hold her down. Nothing really dramatic, nothing to worry about. These are the best kind of repots that I love doing. 
I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you would be so kind as to give me a thumbs up, that would be so greatly appreciated. And consider subscribing to the channel as well. It helps tremendously in supporting the channel. And if you want to share a repot video where there is no drama, straightforward, with a little bit of information, hopefully a tip here or there that you can apply in your own repots, then please share the video as well. In the meantime, I do appreciate you so much for everything you do for the channel. Thank you also for watching to the end. That is a great support as well. It also gives me the opportunity to wish you a beautiful day on the condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.